And finally, our last group of worms. They are called our annelids or our phylum annelida, meaning little rings, because these are worms that are made up of a whole bunch of different little rings, such as earthworms or leeches or bristle worms or feather worms or even sandworms. So our annelids also have bilateral symmetry, meaning you can cut them right down the center and you will have two even parts. They have cells, tissues, organs, and organ systems. So let's talk about their structure because we will be doing our earthworm dissection. They have segments and those are the little rings in their body. And on each one of these segments is a CT, or a tiny hair that is used for movement. You can see in the picture these tiny little hairs coming off the side of the segment. They help the worm wiggle through their environment. Toward the head region of the earthworm, or any annelid, is the clitellum. This clitellum is a light-colored band. It almost looks like it's wearing a Band-Aid. Um, and this is where the worm uh, secretes eggs in order for reproduction to happen. So here's a picture of a real earthworm, and you can see that clitellum that's labeled number one. That is where the eggs are going to be secreted or come out of. Here there's a picture of two worms where both of them have a clitellum and you can see uh, the reproduction. Another structure to note is called the postromium. This is a flap of skin that hangs over top of the mouth and because worms wiggle through all sorts of things this postromium helps to cover the mouth and keep out any debris or gross things. Again our annelids have eye spots used for detecting light not for seeing images. And they even have brain-like structures, and these are called ganglions, and they're a whole bunch of nerves grouped together that act like little brains. There are three classes of annelids. The first one is earthworms. The second is marine worms, or ones that live uh, in the ocean, and they have really thick CT. And our last group are leeches, and they feed on blood. In your packet, let's label our earthworm. So first we have that band-aid structure called the clitellum that releases eggs for reproduction. We have at the front, we have the postronium for covering the mouth. We have the CT and we have the septum. The septum is what divide each segment. Now, on the inside, closest to the top of our worm, we have the ganglions, or the nerve centers. We have what are called aortic arches, and they work together like hearts to pump uh, blood through the worm. We have a nerve cord. We have a nervous system that runs from the ganglions all the way down our earthworm. And we have our circulatory system, so we have all of these blood vessels. Okay? The systems that our worm has, they have excretory systems, digestive systems, uh, it has a reproductive system, a nervous system, right? We have those brain-like ganglion structures. A circulatory system, we, we labeled those aortic arches. Well, there's five of them and they work together to, like a heart. And they have a closed circulatory system. This is the first time where we have blood pumping through tubes throughout the animal's body, through a um, artery or a vein or just a tube that carries blood through the body. In order for our annelids to eat, most of the earthworm types are uh, decomposers, meaning they uh, help to recycle nutrients back into the soil of both uh, the terrestrial, so the earth environments in the soil, and this is what marine animals do in the sand, in the aquatic environments.
As far as reproduction goes, uh, they reproduce only sexually, and some of them are hermaphrodites, so some of them have male and female reproductive organs on the same worm. Uh, but most of them reproduce by passing sperm from one to another. Okay. They do absolutely need moisture to survive. They do not have lungs. They actually breathe through little holes in their skin. That's why they must stay wet. Here are a couple of videos about worms. Wasn't that huge? All right, our next video shows you how worms help with decomposition. Look at how well they did digesting and decomposing that banana. How crazy! All right, in our last video. of stealth, hunting with bloodthirsty efficiency. Sometimes, hapless victims come to them, making for easy prey.
creeping around its victim without being detected. The leech probes for a soft, blood-rich spot to latch onto. Leeches have even developed the means to mask their ferocious bite. The bloodsuckers have an anesthetic that they inject into their victims that allows them to suck the blood without being noticed. That's a very effective way of feeding. This leech is equipped with three saw-like jaws that tear into flesh, enabling it to gorge itself, sometimes taking in ten times its own body weight in blood. Given time, the once graceful leech becomes so engorged it can barely even crawl away. Can now go several months without another feeding. Yet, for all the fear they evoke in us, some leeches make excellent parents. This one is brooding a litter of over 20 offspring, nestled in a special underside patch. All right, so that about wraps it up for worms. I hope you'd enjoyed learning about our worms, and I'll see you next time.